Pigeon Blood Ruby, what's going on? Are we I, live, my dudes? Absolutely, we're live. I saw Autism Mary. I think I just here. shared to uh, I shared to something. <laughs> So, so I, don't, I don't know if this is live on my channel now. Who knows? <laughs> so I'm not sure how that's going to work for this chat. If we'll see all of it, I know I will be able to see it. And I'm pretty sure Meryl will. But uh, oh, there it went. Something popped. Uh, I just saw the notification. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. Hopefully we were able to control the chat, but hopefully we just get out enough good information for everybody tonight and we all have a good time. Muck and Nails is in the house. I better hurry up because it's blowing up. Mark Henninger, what's going on, Mark? Thank you very much. I appreciate you. And I'm going to scroll down just a little faster because I believe it's getting ready to change. Fox in the Ground is in here as well. Joe Dirt, Looter 8. Thank you, guys. Metal Detecting Northwestern Wisconsin. Welcome. Says, yep. hey, Meryl. It's on my channel. <laughs> there you go. See, it worked. So there you go. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll pick up some watch hours tonight, Meryl. Sounds good. Sounds good. It's always good. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to get a little faster here because I know it's going to change. Marvin Huff. Thank you. Thank you. Fun with dirt. Welcome. Miss Grandma Kelly. Welcome. Thank you so much. And Mary, here's my resident sarcastic person. They have stuff for that itch. I know they do, Mary. I'm. It, it's. I need it. All right. I'm going to cruise just a little faster because we're almost to the bottom and I can get started. You guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging out. And the chat's blowing up so fast that I can't get to the bottom. Ninja Detectorist, welcome. I, there's one there. I'm not sure which which format that is. I see a little symbol on the YouTube. I think it's yours. I'm going to guess that that's what that means. Woodland Metal Detecting, Treasure Charger Rich. Here's another one. Metal Detecting 714 says, Evening Merrill. He's one of yours. David Frazier, welcome. Thank you. Let's see. Okay, I'm, I'm just learning how this is going to work. So the next time I do it, 54 Cal, greetings, everyone. Rob Kobe, gr greetings. Thank you. Okay, we found some of your people, Merrill. Here we go. So. I'm going to go ahead and skip on further down to the bottom here and go ahead and get started because it will be absolutely all night trying to keep up with you folks. Hey, everybody, first and foremost, let's thank Merrill for his time this evening to let me probe him into this uh, industry that we have right now and his uh, view on the hobby. Thanks very much. Of course. All right, man. Well, you know, like I like we've just said earlier, um, I think most of where my conversation really wanted to begin today and I, and, and that goes back to, you know, a couple of years ago when the, when the rumblings of the, of this Manticore came out and uh, a lot of people thought it was going to be the Equinox 1000, which that still may come. I'm not really sure since they did the seven and the 900 and um, you know, your first impression of that machine as it's came out, do you feel like that changing the VDI and everything they were trying to keep up with Deus and try to work towards that format of going away from their, you know, lower number scale? Did you feel anything like that? Or did you feel like that, that was just an independent next step for mind lab? Uh, I mean, I go back and forth with that to tell you the truth. I think the target ID is something that I am less dependent on the longer that I detect. And, you know, I, I've done the target ID Bibles. I think I have like four or five on my channel right now. I'm due for one with the Manticore. And the more that you study that, the more that you see how those numbers are irrelevant. What is relevant is, is it an iron signal or is it a non-ferrous signal? And um, knowing that helps. And, uh, you know, there, there's things that they throw in there. I, I love the enhanced audio, uh, which is really... Um, yeah, I, I don't want to say Deus uh, invented it, but perhaps they perfected it. And, um, you know, that seemed to be something that was borrowed from them where you could really hear uh, the size and it, with practice, the shape of an object. I, I think that that was a great addition. Um, but you were asking about the target ID. Um, yeah, stretch it out. 
you know, I, I guess uh, with with some clad, you know, you can uh, kind of tell what you get. And um, I, I don't know. I just think that there's so much variance, even with the same types of objects. Um, but you see it a little bit better when it's stretched out to 99 versus uh, a scale of 40. Right. I, and and uh, so I, uh, I've i been an avid uh, fan of Knock the Macro since uh, the Impact came out. I had it. I, I skipped the Amphibio. I, wonder, I skipped the Amphibio because I saw you're disgusted with it. But it, <laughs> it, it has its place. Uh, the Amphibio and the Impact are both still really solid machines. It's kind of really strange how they work. But, you know, I, over the last five, six, seven years of, of being in the hobby, I'm more prone to the sounds as well, or to the to the sound, not the number and what I hear in between the iron. I uh, like, we'll I'll skip over really fast to the legend. I do all metal mode on the legend because I don't like where gold sometimes hits. And it, it you know, gold, I've had a, a gold stud earring hit at eight. And uh, yeah, uh, it would and get I, rejected. And I, and if you don't, if you don't go into all metal mode there or have it in one of their preset modes, it rejects that signal. And I want to hear the iron. I love the ability to turn down the volume of the iron. So I just have the iron at a low grunt so that I hear it when I swing over. And then I dig just about everything. But the main point you made about, I think that you made about the legend is, is that it loses BDI on depth pretty, uh, pretty rapidly. It seems like I noticed that you know, anything over six, eight inches that I'm losing, my number is dropping quite a bit off the VDI where like, say it, we'll just use a quarter, not a quarter so much, say a dime signal is standard, like 45, 46. Sometimes I'm down around a zinc penny range when I get down that deep with it. So it drops VDI a lot. Is that your finding with that machine and elaborate just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you lose, uh, I mean, if you are somebody who depends on the numbers, and I would definitely recommend that you do not depend on the numbers. If you are, you're going to be lost with that machine. But it gets you in good habits. You could somewhat understand if it's conductive or uh, non-conductive target. And, you know, if you commit to dig the uh, conductive targets, uh, you know, you'll do fine with it. Uh, I remember the silver that uh, kind of threw it off. And it was ringing up at 14. There was a lot of other stuff that was going on in terms of uh, it being in a New York City park. I'm referring to a video that I did uh, that I think it's called We Stumped the uh, the Legend or something like that. But uh, my friend Jeff had uh, his Equinox. I had a Legend. You know, we used same size coils and such. And we went to a New York City park. And there was one signal that the Legend could not get. And it was a silver dime uh, that was pretty deep and it was surrounded by iron. And uh, that one, you know, it beeped. It was around 14 when we did get it. But I, there was so much other stuff in there. It just was not a clear signal. And, uh, you know, that one really sticks out in my head with that. Getting stuff at depth with that detector, yes. Um, you'll get it. But in terms of getting a solid id on it i mean everybody knows the deeper the target um, the less reliable it is but it's like a standard deviation beyond with the legend you know when you get that deep target you're absolutely ready for that deep target i i, I thrive on them i love farm field hunting more than i do park hunting but you know that goes without saying that anything that's deep you know you got to dig it regardless so a little bit of drop of a vdi doesn't scare me so much um sh quick shift there is that uh, just a perception thing. Uh, Delec is probably the most passionate uh, person out there for a metal detecting company that you'll ever see. And she's very defensive over her product and her company. Uh, I've seen where there's a couple lawsuits going around and I, I, I seen one in Western Pennsylvania. I saw that, you know, mine lab had sued uh, them for something. I didn't quite read into it to a whole bunch. Um, the price, the, you know, as far as we're going to go, the quality of the machine and the price uh, of the legend really makes it stand out pretty much above everything else because you're you're about 40% of the price of like an 800, maybe 50%. And you're getting very similar uh, 
depth and quality of detecting. Would you agree? Yes, you are. I would wholeheartedly agree. Uh, some people will laugh, but I consider it a peer of the Manticore <laughs> and, and the Equinox and the Deus too. It, it's a peer. I'm not. Am I saying it's as good? Eh, I, I prefer the other ones to it. it. It can hang. It can more than hang. And we're talking about a third of the price. Uh, th there's value there. It beats Absolutely. it in value. It does not beat it in performance. So ha now, now the next part of that is, is that I just wanted to go through that because I'm a legend guy. I, I, I've had, I've already, on my next video that's coming up is legend versus manacore because my buddy got his manacore and we've got to go out and bounce off a few signals together when he first got it. We heard the same thing. So, you know, all things being equal, uh, there's a lot of people that love the mind lab equipment right now with the new Xterra. And then you got the six, the seven, the eight and the 900. How much difference is there really between the six and the 900 right now? And those four machines or vice versa, the eight and the 900 and the six and the 700 realistically for somebody that's interested in buying a new machine. Nil. The answer is nil. I could answer in one word. Um, I had the 600 and the 800 and uh, actually somebody in the audience, uh, Rob Covey, who's here, I dig with him and uh, he has uh, the 900. He also had the 700 and I've used, uh, I, he's let me use his and it's just got a very similar feel. I won't say that it's better than, you know, the 800. Um, you know, yes, it has the, the split uh, target ID, uh, you know, more stretched out. Um, the sensitivity, I, I don't know. I look at that as like the cutting of a pizza. I know that it goes up a little bit higher. Um, is it like a pizza or is it a higher amount? That's the essential question. Um, I kind of feel it's a pizza. Then again, it does go a little bit wild when you get uh, to those higher numbers. Um, I, I just, I think the answer is nil. Uh, the machine that I've pulled the most with in my life is the Equinox 600. And then after a while, uh, I moved on to the 800. And really, there was, I'm going to say very little difference. I saw no difference. I saw no difference. Um, it, it's really no difference. Where you want to get that is, let's say that you are somebody that's going underwater. That's when you want to get the... Um, uh, the 900 or the 700 is it, yeah the, it, let's just say 900 for now um I, i'm tired from work i'm blanking yes the 700 is um i'm trying to think of the headphone configuration of the 700 i'm blanking a little bit on that but i know the 900 comes with the bluetooth um you know fully submersible i'm pretty sure the 700 is too um <laughs> if you're going to dunk it underwater that is when you, you want to, you know, get the other equipment or get a legend. Yeah. So um, I, I haven't even heard. Have they had any of the leaking issues with the new Equinox series or the Manicore? Has that been one of the things that's popped up yet? I got yelled at. I, I threw mine in my bathtub and like everybody was like, that's not a real test. I'm like, listen, the water temperature right now is like below freezing. Okay. Well, it wouldn't be below freezing or we'd have ice, but it was pretty close. Um, <laughs> that probably didn't count. I did that in a video. Um, I, I think it would be all over the place if that started, because uh, that is kind of like, that's kind of like where MindLab burned a lot of people. Um, people had to get it replaced a number of times. I'll say in fairness, they were great about replacing it. Absolutely. Um, my, my friend uh, Lou, uh, Indiana Tones, um, he was just about to be out of warranty, you know, had his detector for three years and they gave him another box, you know, his broke and uh, they they were more than fair with the replacement. It had to cost them a lot, but uh, they were great with that. But still it, you know, it annoyed a lot of people. It, uh, it was something that, um, you know, anytime you don't have your best detector, you're disappointed and you're frustrated um we would have heard if this continued yeah. i think it would have been deadly for them if it did and it didn't that's one of the things they got right well you know i'm glad because i 
you know, I, I love the Equinox and I love, um, I got friends that have the 800, both of them, and I'll use it consistently. But a lot of my friends are, they refuse to put it in the water whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I take my legend and I just, I just throw it. I submerse it. If I was to buy one of the new machines, that's the first thing I would have done. I would have filled my bathtub and I would have set it in there for an hour just to see if it bubbled, you know, or, because I, I would want to know, right. I would want to know right off the get go. Yeah especially since they had such a hard time. And I assume that they fixed it. Now we, <laughs> I heard, you know, when, when uh, I watched the video, when you basically had your power discussion over more power mm -hmm. and you said, and then I didn't get a chance to follow up with that. And I know you, the last thing I heard was that mind lab called you that following week. What was that discussion like? They were great. Uh, to tell you the truth, I felt really bad uh, because you know, I, I believed everything that I said. I really, really did, especially after getting that insert to the, uh, to the box and you saw the power levels uniform all the way down. And we had done the research, um, you know, Dan Blankenship actually had done the research and um, <laughs> believed it. And, you know, it, I, I'm an artist, you know, a visual artist and, um, you know, there's art critics out there and it's always annoying because like you put your heart and your soul into your work and you got people that ba that bash it. And, you know, it, you, you have to be objective and there, there's a there's a function to that. You know, there's a uh, there's a need for that. But it's still annoying to people who, you know, absolutely worked so hard in creating it. And uh, I, I spoke to them. And, uh, you know, it, it was, um, you know, the chief engineer uh, from Mind Lab, who, because I'm, <laughs> after a long day of work, I'm blanking on his name, uh, but great guy. Um, oh, my God. This is, somebody put it in the chat. <laughs> I spoke to him, and he, he's the guy who's the, um, the main guy at Mind Lab right now. And, uh, you know, he basically was saying, no, there is you know, that much power that goes into the ground. And, you know, what I say, uh, what I believe right now is it's not equating to much more depth. I do believe that there is more power that's going into the ground. And where you can see that, where it makes sense to me is when you use the manticore around power lines and you get the EMI issues that, um, you know, previously... Um, you know, like you put the Equinox by the power lines, there's all sorts of problems. Manticore, it's like those power lines don't exist. And wow. yeah, that's due to having more power. Uh, another person who is really influential to me, who's really taken the time uh, to speak to me about uh, his views on building metal detectors is Georgi uh, Chosev uh, from Nexus. And, uh, you know, he was uh, telling me about, um, you know, power and, you know, how that would affect uh, EMI. And that's exactly what I saw. Um, so, yeah, I, I do believe uh, that uh, they have more power. Nobody's forcing me to say that. I said all along in the original video, which I took most of what I had. I think the only thing I cut out was where I was like, Mind Lab is a liar. Shame on Mind Lab. <laughs> or whatever the heck I said. But pretty much the original video is like still there, except for that, which I cut out. Um, Mind Lab was kind to me. And, um, you know, I, I, I kind of felt like a jerk to tell you the truth because I didn't want to be that person trampling somebody's art. We all love Mind Lab, all of us. You know, we're, I think we're thankful to Mind Lab. We're thankful to Nocta. We're, even Garrett, you know, raising the bar. You know, making it, you know, it, we're thankful to that. I called out or tried to call out what I truly believed, but I said all along, if I said I was, if it turned out I was wrong, I'd say I was wrong. I think I was wrong. Well, the, I, I'm, I'm, that's kind of nice to hear. I mean, but you know what? Uh, the thought that went into that video and, and the prep and trying to make sure that you you had your information straight and put out a quality product regardless of, and I get the the whole output thing. Uh, I, I went to electronic school. I didn't quite get that far into it as to knowing that stuff. I, uh, I ventured more into high voltage, but 
I, I was I was really curious because, you know, when you was talking about the max output that it was allowed to have by the, uh, uh, yeah, I get, whichever. That was the gain that we got from it, that there right. is a cap. And, uh, you know, that how much it affects things, that's, you know, that's a whole nother story. But uh, that is a gain that we got out of that. Um, I, I want to repeat, I don't feel that it is getting much deeper into the ground, if any deeper, where you will see the differences is with small objects. Uh, right. You'll go deeper on the smaller objects, but there's, it's just, I don't know if it's multi-frequency. That is just, it's so good. Uh, like the U.S. has uh, fighter aircraft. I was just watching um, a short on that. Um, it, it can't go, I think it's the uh, F-24. It uh, It's designed to only go supersonic at uh, very, uh, for very short bursts of time. Um, because it's uh, the radar signature, you know, it, it's designed to elude radar and it heats up when it goes supersonic. So, you know, there, there's uh, there's different reasons for all of the tech that we have. And in terms of simultaneous multi-frequency, it is so agile in places like New York where you have lots and lots of stuff. And maybe it's not meant to be that super deep machine. Maybe that's what we're giving up like um, SR-71 Blackbird for an analogy. Yes, I'm a plane geek. <laughs> um, that will go absolutely so fast. Can it turn very well? No, it can't. So detectors, you know, tools that we use, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, simultaneous multi-frequency is so popular right now, but I bet we're giving up something. And yeah. that's that's what we're looking into right now. Absolutely, I was, you know, the the multi frequency thing. I, you know, I remember, I remember all the stuff I read and saw, and I thought, hey, this is a great thing. And, I, and a lot of times, I think it's really great in um, in certain areas. I think it, I think Mind Lab statement originally, like it paints a, a better picture of what you're kind of looking at. I, I I do believe that at times, but there's a lot of times that I'll come out of multi-frequency and go and check something in a single, usually uh, like a five, 10 or a 15 frequency on whatever I'm using. And I hear that signal just as well. Sometimes it may be a little different. Uh, sometimes it may throw a different VDI, but I seem to, I'm a dig it all kind of person anyway, but I still seem to hear on the single frequency. Do you believe that single frequency still offers the, the max amount of depth when you're, if you, if you really want to narrow it down to something like that, or do you think the multi-frequency keeps you going deeper? That's a great question. I, I don't think that I'm qualified to answer that. I always like to say, I don't know when a question is uh, <laughs> beyond my technical uh, knowledge. Observationally, observationally, I would say yes. And, um, I, I mean, what really messes with my head is I have a lot of experience with the Equinox and the 15-inch coil, and boy, did that make a difference. You know, a bigger coil, you know, you'll get down a few inches more, and that was a multi-frequency machine. Um, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm looking back on the older, the um, deepest I've gone, um, and, you know, I try to make the estimates as uh, close to a measurement as possible. There was one target with the amphibio that was just a crater. That machine let me down so many times, but I'm telling you, and maybe it was user error. I don't know, <clears throat> but one time it, I got every, I got all of the stars lined up, and we went down 16 inches with that thing. So, and yeah, yeah, th that was absurd. Um, managing it, man. It, it's for me, it was not a fun detector. Well, the early, the early high end Noctis, uh, I believe just were, they were so chattery that they took so much fine tuning to get to, for your current condition to get it correct. Uh, I, I think my impact has like 12 different search modes and I took, and there was a deep mode on there that was specific and I took it down to my park here and it drove me absolutely nuts. I wanted to throw it away. And yes. then I realized, and then I realized that that's why you get an adjustable machine because you adjust it to your surroundings. 
but in your back of your mind, you want to dig the deepest targets. You want to go as far down as humanly possible and, and find that, you know, that 1700s uh, gold or silver, you know, you want that. So a lot of times you, you have to weigh it out on what you can handle mentally before it drives you crazy. And that's what I found with the early Noctis. That's a great observation. That's an interesting one. I was reading in a magazine. Uh, I, I've bought the, a whole bunch of old uh, treasure hunting magazines uh, from the 70s, uh, some even dating back to like the 60s. And uh, you see some interesting articles there. Uh, it, like it was the early days and people looked for the type of ground, a specific type of ground that was like really hard packed. And of course, maps, they're talking about maps, you know, coming into play. Um, but they wanted soil that was like really hard packed. And they were talking about getting stuff from the 1700s at an inch or two. I've pulled a few of those in my life, too, that people have just totally missed. Or maybe it was, you know, uh, plowed of some sort, tilled, whatever, you know, and, um, you know, mixed in. Um, and you get a few like I pulled a real, um, you know, from 1750s at like an inch and it's like what what just happened um that could have been mixed in but they looked for they looked for that really compacted dirt and um that's consistent with what i've seen i started digging a lot later uh, than when uh you know the the times that they were um interviewed in and recommending that but you know i think that there were a few undisturbed pieces that were just <laughs> high up there in that compacted dirt. Uh, I, my, my husband has a man of glory. He's still debel, debating about selling it. He is finding stuff with it. He just isn't sure he likes it. He's been detecting for 40 years. That's an interesting point, Bells. Uh, you know, right now that's that's supposed to be, you know, as far as if you want to spend the money between it and the day is two, you can't get any higher. I'm really curious to what he's looking for in a machine because I feel like when I played with the Manicore, I felt like it was very stable and and I did it I, and everything I wanted to hear with it. I heard kind of curious to what he wouldn't what he didn't like about it. And Jason, uh, we're going to we're going into lower end detectors now because that's the next big uh, battleground and in, in metal detection companies. Um, my simplex is, is so comparable to every other thing that I have. Um, I got a new guy started with it. I'm going to get to detect with him some this year. But that simplex, I heard deep targets. Now, it loves iron a little bit more than than the new ones. That it doesn't separate as well, but it separates side by side really well. And for 250 bucks, it's been a great buy. <coughs> uh, a little bit, I don't know much about it, and I've only seen a couple things. Um, where are we standing on? What's the Xterra look like and and how is it going to affect the field of how's it going to affect the game of metal detecting? Because for two hundred and sixty dollars, what all does it have and, and what do you know about it? That was an evil move by Mind Lab right there. I mean, evil in the, the business sense, like logical. Um, I think that they were going right after the simplex with that one. And they understand that people like it, the basic user understands frequencies that um you know if you have uh, a low frequency you know it's going to be better for the high conductors and such and uh and larger objects and um you know it, gold you know it's high frequency and um you know small and you know the basic user understands this and being able to switch, adding that to what the simplex brings, uh, which is essentially what MindLab has done. They threw the flashlight on there to say, beep you to, <laughs> sorry if this is a family show, to, uh, to Nocta, um, which is, there's a clear rivalry going on there. Um, you know, it, it's, it's essentially matching it and throwing something else in there. It's great for the consumer, but... Um, you know, man, this is uh, this is becoming an intense rivalry right there. So in my best estimation, I feel like that, you know, that Nocta basically said, hey, my simplex is just as good, if not 
I'm not going to say better than in its current form than the Vanquish series. They, they, they didn't feel threatened by the Vanquish series whatsoever. It doesn't seem like. And then I heard Dalek, you know, when she come out and, and, and she called mind lab out on not going back to single frequency, yada, yada, yada. I laughed at all that stuff too. I think she's an absolute trip. So now, and then was this currently being developed, this uh, new mode of simplex, or where did this come from? Because then all of a sudden, I heard the x and then I heard the new line of simplexes. Uh, have you seen those yet? Or You know what's interesting? It's almost like MindLab was ready, but um, I I'm speculating here. Yeah, I get it. Um, Nocta was not, because I did searches after Dilek uh, did uh, that video, and there's nothing out uh, and meanwhile, you know, Mind Lab. If you did a search for the Xterra Pro, uh, there were people uh, that had it in their hands already. You know, there were leaks of that, and I don't know if it was just three prototypes. If they're trying to create buzz, take buzz away. But um, I really think that uh, Nocta has owned that market, the intro market. I mean, I've been recommending them for the past few years because really. That was a groundbreaking machine. Well, metal detectors are designed to be groundbreaking machines, especially with okay. the assistance of shovels. Right. But um, <laughs> it was truly a groundbreaking machine. Um, I wanted to, um, there was an interesting question about the Manticore um, and uh, the lady whose husband owns it. Um, I, I wanted to point out, like, there's impossible expectations for that device. Totally impossible. Because it's coming after the equinox, like it, it, it's almost like um, you know the Beatles following up Abbey Road, Michael Jackson following up Bad, you know, like what comes next? Like that is the it, like that had the monopoly on uh, treasure detectors, you know, from uh, 2019, maybe even 2018. I know it was like late 2017 when it came out, 2018 to 2020 early 2022 every video that was out somebody was using an equinox like you th you had an occasional garrett you'd have an occasional um you know other manufacturer but man I i'll never forget it you go to a park you see other detectorists hey man what are you using equinox it, it just uh, maybe it's new york it just owned new york so it was impossible to Follow that up. Like, you don't get monopolies in an economy as diverse as America's. Or I mean, it's a global economy now. You don't see that very often. Everybody using one thing. But it just, it did the job. It invented separation. It really, like modern separation on a metal detector. It was like one or two standard deviations better than anything else in the market. You had to try it. When you tried it, it was like, okay. <laughs> now those days are gone. Everything has been dug, you know, that, you know, this machine unlocked. Not everything. No, if everything was dug, I would. <laughs> we, we'd all be crying. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that, the, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have enough to dig at least for our lifetime going forward. And then, yeah. you know, and who knows what's being dropped today that will be considered treasure in the future, right? Uh, yeah. well, I mean, we haven't even got to that side of it yet. That's right. So, you know, for the consumer, and look, I, and I'm going to say that, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that come out here that are hobbyists that, you know, that want to have the newest, latest, greatest toys. There's people that are skeptical about getting into the market. There are all different types of consumers out here for this product. All I can all I can think of in my mind is uh, with let's just say two new equinoxes, a Manticore, a, an Xterra that are just all recent come you know out with a new Simplex line, Legend last year. Uh, all these detectors hitting the market is going to tell me that there's going to be some opportunity for folks at a very 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 reasonable clip to either pick up something used or something new that's going to last them for as long as they want it to last. And it, once you flood the market with something, then uh, people like you are going to have more opportunity to play with more machines for less money, you know, to test and, and make your 
books. By the way, I rate metal detectors. You can buy a Target ID Bible for most every detector that Merrill owns. And uh, that's probably one of those things I got. I think I'm just going to buy the one for the legend just to see what it looks like. But I know there's a lot of time and effort that goes into that stuff. And by the way, Thanks, uh, I know that we're looking on this and over over on Merrill's channel, we're sitting over 100 and some change, 187 in here total tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time out and listening. I know there's 40 in my side and that's more on his side, but that that goes to his popularity. But I thank you guys for showing up this evening. Uh, if you want to address a question, just tag my name in it if you want something asked, because we've still got a little bit of time left that we can go through. Uh, do you see, I mean, I, I mean, maybe New York's a little different. Do you see, uh, you know, like pawn shops stocking up, ending up with a bunch of metal detectors and the price going down? No. Um, <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, uh, social media, uh, Facebook marketplace is a big one. Um, eBay and such, you know, that, that, that's really where, you know, I don't think New York has any remaining detector shops in the city. There was one in Brooklyn and it closed uh, like during the early pandemic. And uh, it exists, um, I think, through phone calls, like a website and phone calls. So, um, yeah, it, there's not really a place that I know of to get detecting equipment in New York. Um, I always used Kellyco. Um, you know, I think highly of them. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think, uh, I think it's all internet nowadays. For sure. I, I, I but I, I'm just wondering what the, you know, the outcome is going to be for the market flooding right now. You know, whenever you flood the market with something, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of what's being traded in or sold for, you know, everybody wants something new. I'm just waiting to see all those used detectors because I like to play with stuff as well. Uh, you know, certain companies have been almost forced out of business because of Nocta and Mind Labs' big push here lately. Uh, I guess only the strong survive in that aspect. Johnny's Corner asked, uh, thought on the Vanquish series as a beginner? I took a Vanquish and gave it to one of the people at uh, one of the people in my chat has a Vanquish, and I helped her set it up, and that she was digging in a very trashy area. And I notched out just a few targets just to get her going. And uh, Bone Dead Heathens is in here tonight, and she's done very well with her Vanquish uh, right next to her husband, who uses the, the Man Lab Equinox 800. So that's a great detector. Uh, you had a lot of playing with the Vanquish on the beach. How is it as a beach detector? Great. Um, I think separation is really not an issue on the beach, um, unless if you're getting really down. Like when the beach is down, and low, you get a lot of iron because that's what people never seem to pull. Unless if you're a relic hunter and that, you know, relic hunter on the beach does not really exist. So right. you get this bed of iron uh, when the beach is really low. And it could throw that off, no doubt about that. But um, for the most part, it's a great beach detector. Um, there's a difference, you know, difference in depth, difference in separation. Um and utility. I mean, it, it's not vanquish is not uh, something that goes underwater. Um, but you know, that's what I recommend. It, it's the cheapest beach capable detector that's out there. Um, you know, the, the lowest of the vanquish series. So you know, it's a great start for somebody who wants to start on the beach. And I've always steered people to the simplex for people who want to start on dirt. But uh, now with the Xterra Pro, um, and I do plan on getting that, I have a feeling that's going to set the trend, you know, set the pace. Yeah. So, you know, the low end bar is going to be set pretty high going forward. I mean, that Xterra Pro looks pretty sweet. So, you know, I, I expect I expect Dialect to come back with a with a mad, you know, uh, She's going to be in a mad frenzy to keep up with the Joneses. I think she wants to win so bad that she can taste it. And uh, I think that's going to make for interesting. I, I just love watching that. There's so much competition over it. But, you know, I, I also remember the video you did about the parent company for Mind Lab. Do you feel like they're in cash grab mode? Do you feel like that their overall parent company uh is trying to use this to to kind of build itself back up or it was that just kind of speculative 
No, I had looked at the balance sheet for that one, and uh, that is uh, it, it's public information. And uh, MindLab is essentially holding that company up right now. That's the that's the cash cow in the business. Um, that's the big, you know, cog in the machine. Um, so you know, there there has to be uh, some interest in that. They have to keep selling equipment, and I think that. Uh, you know, yes, they innovate. There's no doubt about that. But they also need to get a product out. And truthfully, where I see it, I love MindLab, but I think the value is in the Equinox more so than the Manticore, as I see it. Um, Target Trace is interesting. Uh, my friend Jeff loves it, and I respect his word a lot. Um, I don't see as much value in it. I do see the value in the... Um, the audio uh like i think that it has much better audio capabilities than the equinox um target id yes is better um but we have that price difference you know you got 1100 for the top of the line uh equinox now versus 1600 um i would give the value uh to the equinox line you could even say hey i want to get a 600 right now and pay six hundred dollars for it, and really not get too much less <laughs> than what you get with the uh, Equinox nine hundred. So you know, I I think the value is there, um, you know. And in between, you know, you get the vanquishes. You, you have a lot of interesting choices. Yeah, I I, I think I, I just I just always try to think about hey, what's it going to bring tomorrow? What's the next thing going to be? Because you know, we're all of this mindset you know when something new comes out new toys we're all we're all a lot of us are guys that are just waiting for new toys always and i think that's what's really cool uh my friend rich treasure charger asked if he thinks that there's a better pinpointer than the garrett carrot i'll i'll ask that one to you because oh. i've used the garrett carrot and i've i've used the nocta pinpointer and uh, the mind lab uh profine 35 i have a little bit but do you think there's one that's better you know, the honest answer is I've only used the Garrett Carrot. It's like the industry standard. It's what keeps Garrett going, perhaps. Um, you're just so used to the Garrett Carrot. Um, you know, I've spent money that <laughs> some would say is not smart to spend. It did give me a more of a worldview. But, you know, you, it's answered a lot of questions for me. I, I didn't have <laughs> the means yet to really break into pinpointers, especially with all of these new detectors coming out. So I've kind of stuck with the Garrett Carrot. However, what's interesting to me is anytime I do a lot of beach hunting. Anytime I get it in the salt water, it falses. And I'm like, okay, there's got to be a multi-frequency pinpointer that can solve that. So that's the one thing I'll say is a negative about the Garrett Carrot. Yeah, I, I I love my Garrett. I've had it. I, I actually my my original one uh, got left in a farm field. We had to go find it. I had to go hunt it out. I was in the middle of a 200 acre farm field. It took me. The guy I dig with is half blind and he's the one that actually found it. So I don't know how that works, but uh, it, it, it got ruined. It laid out there for too long in the cold. Mm. Uh, it didn't it didn't work after that. So I got another one and, you know, I'm I'm waiting for the bluetooth capable one from nocta for the legend i'm I, that's probably the next one i'm going to play with i'm mm -hmm. excited for that I, I hopefully it's got a ferris non-ferris feature on it but you know they're very hush hush about that uh do you i mean so you know i know that you know we've gotten through all these detectors there's four thousand new detectors out there right now it seems like uh, what have you got? What do you got set for your plans for this year? I know you just said you're going back to teaching. So, uh, what is your what is your uh, YouTube uh, life look like the rest of this year? I want to travel. Uh, travel is very important. The kids are getting older, and uh, my son's about uh, three and a half uh, years away from college, and uh, you know my daughter just turned ten. And travel, you know, the pandemic people, everybody slowed down with their travel. And, you know, those years, you know, you you want to make up for that. <laughs> so I've actually been spending a little bit less on detectors and more on travel, um, you know, with the, you know, what YouTube gives and such. And 
uh, I do plan on getting um, the Xterra Pro and, you know, I'll continue to get more detectors. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I've had a lot of the questions answered in my head. And to give you a soundbite, they're all very similar. <laughs> we pay for, uh, I mean, if, if we get told and it's proven that one will get us uh, down another inch with better separation, you better believe we're going to pay top dollar for that. Um, <laughs> competitive advantage, you know, but really uh, you could spend the same energy on getting on better ground and perhaps get better results. You know, that that's the interesting part of the equation. Um, and I don't think that MindLab is done announcing new detectors. You know, I'm probably going to piss somebody off by saying this, but, you know, the CTX 3030 at the top, like that's a 20, I think it's 2012. Yeah. Um, it's either 2010 or 2012 detector. And I'm sorry, it modern separation, it does not have. Does it have a lot of great features that help you inference? It sure does. But if it can't separate, you can't use it in a place like New York. And right. I, I took it out a bunch of times. And I just could not get comfortable with that detector at all. And to me, it is just, I, I know somebody is just like, oh, I'm turning this video off. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And he dresses in orange and, bah. but <laughs> I just did not, it, it did not connect with me at all. <laughs> kind of like what you were saying about your early experiences with the uh, Noctas and you love Nocta and I love Mind Lab, and I love Nocta. Um, it just could not, it did not work with my brain compared, like going from the Equinox to that. It's like, oh my God, this is like several steps down. And that's its most expensive treasure detector, non-gold detector. Um, it doesn't make sense that something that is 11 years old, if it's from 2012, is their most expensive detector. We're going to have a replacement for that. I see the Manticore as more of a replacement. It is very similar to the E-Track. Yes. You know, it, it it's an E-Track. Um, and they took that off the market. So I bet we're going to have another announcement from my so, uh, Really, really fast. A $300 detector can out-hunt a $2,000 detector in the hands of an experienced detector. Totally agree, Ben. Thank you for the comment. He's over on Merrill's channel and... Pete says, Meryl dressed in orange for Ohio River history. Absolutely. It's my favorite color. It's every, it's, it's entwined in my life. Everything I have is that color and, and he matches my, my little overlay that I made for today. So absolutely. I planned it. I planned it. Yep. And it's, <laughs> it's completely planned out. Um, you know what? One of the most interesting aspects of the whole Mind Lab Corporation and the changes as they've gotten going, gone further along. Here's the question for you. Do you think that when this next so-called CTX 3030 replacement comes out, do you think they will go back to the dual VDI, which was very popular part of the uh, the E-Track and the CTX? Right. The uh, the uh, Ferris number and the non-Ferris number. I remember that. Um, I don't know. I like. I don't. I never heard that as being very popular. If anything, it, it confused a lot of people. Um, I get co comments on, or I've read comments, not just on my videos, but on other videos, like why are there two numbers there? Which one am I looking at? And I think that what the Equinox did is you could really, it used to be you had to really dial up a detector and know everything about it. And in order to have optimal success, you had to say to yourself, okay, what is the ground like? And, you know, what is the target that I'm looking for? And, you know, factor all of these things in. The Equinox is plug and play. Yeah, you, you turn it on, you choose a mode, and you go. And other detectors are like that, but to a lesser extent. Equinox made it easy for everybody, and you could just rock with it. Um, I think the two numbers... You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it would resonate. I know that some people believe that 
it was a lot easier to sniff out a, a silver signal with the, the dual VDIs and that, you know, that you could, you could guarantee that you found one, but I still, I still always felt like it's not necessarily that signal. It's what's laying next to it on top of it, underneath it, you know, that that's really going to change the way that that works out. I don't know if that's actually the truth, but I know that the E-Track was pretty good at finding silver coins. So uh, any idea on the simplex pricing models? Um, haven't heard anything yet. I didn't no. either. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't sure. I saw that and found it kind of interesting. I'm trying to go through some of the, and you guys are going to have to pardon me, but I've never had uh, Mer like Merrill's channels kind of blown up on this stream and trying to keep up with this chat has been amazingly hard and trying to get some questions out. Um, Oh, let me say this. Uh, so everybody check out Ohio River History. Give them a subscription. Um, it, it is so hard to build a following on YouTube. Metal detecting. We got to all support each other. So please check out his channel. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's, you know, let's help each other grow. That's very important. I agree, Beach Junkies. Too much talking. Let's go swing. You know, I can get a flashlight. It's fairly warm tonight. I know I'm going to swing tomorrow at some height, so it's going to be uh, – I'm, I'm excited about getting out tomorrow as well. I mean, like I said, we're, we're coming up on 10. We're not going to extend this uh, uh, too late tonight. But, however, I'm going to uh, open up a giveaway for uh, – and I can't do it for both streams, but I can do it in mine. I'm going to drop an Amazon gift card here. Uh, in the next 10 to 15 minutes, because that's about what time I close it down at about 10, 15, uh, I'll get it set up here while I'm still talking to Merrill and uh, get it ready to go. But it'll just be a draw. So anybody that wants to swing over here and like Merrill said, smash those buttons. I definitely would appreciate it. Um, also, anybody that's posting links in the chat when you're in my chat and I see you, you're uh, given the opportunity to be a moderator so that you can post. And I'm going to add another one right there. I just saw. Uh, but, you know, direction, you know, you're, you said you said earlier that, that you're going to update your website a little bit. Um, direction for what your plan. I mean, I know that giving away your plans for your channel is kind of a, it, it, it's kind of like monkey see, monkey do. But, you know, I know that you've really gotten into uh teaching of about about the detectors that we use i know that you've really got into that side of it what do you what, what do you think is going to come i mean because you've actually blown since i've been watching you your channel has erupted and it's because of how you speak to people what do you think's next i mean where do you think it goes from here i just do what my rice krispies tell me to do and you know i put my ear really close and uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I just get different interests over, you know, at different periods of time. And I'm like, let's test that. And I, I, I just go with it. You know, for a while I was like, yeah, let's do some unlocks with the videos. And, you know, if we did that. We did some metal detecting rap. We did some uh, metal detecting metal, which makes sense. Um, we did some actual metal detecting. We did a show becoming a millionaire metal detecting we tried a bunch of different things and, uh, you know, it, it, keep it changing with honest interests is kind of the formula that I try to choose. Um, you know, it, it, we're a small community and, you know, my art channel was the early days of YouTube and, you know, that reached 100,000. This will someday, you know, maybe that's years down the road, but this is what I like to do. I like to metal detect. And um, when that happens, that happens. You kind of just like ebb and flow with the plot lines that are given. And having all of the detectors that I do, it, it's increased my worldview. It's answered a lot of those questions for myself. So I, I think just continue with that when I have a genuine interest in something. And uh, I'm not saying I'm stopping with uh, irate metal detectors or anything like that. Um, this year, I want to go on trips and I kind of want to see the world because, um, you know, kids are getting older and uh, Merrill's getting older <laughs> and uh, it, it's an important thing to do. 
Uh, well, I, I will speak to the family side of that. You know, you, your kids are only young once. And then once they're gone, they're, they're pretty much gone. They're going to start their lives and do their things. Um, that little Gabby, you're, she's a, she's a pistol <laughs> and, and your son is, uh, he's grown up so fast. You know, you, we've watched, we've watched your kids grow up here. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of cool as well. I, yep. I spent a lot of time last year myself, uh, on small trips, going out and digging with other folks. Um, and I, and I've had a blast doing that meeting people. It's absolutely fun. Uh, you know, I wanted to say really fast, uh, I got to meet Charlie last fall at, uh, Big stock in New York at Heritage. What Relic a great Hunter. guy. Yep. What a fantastic individual. I know I didn't get to speak with you very long, but it was a pleasure meeting you. And I enjoyed the time we spent up there. Also, oh, Jersey is, Charlie, Ray, is Charlie here in the audience? Yeah. He, uh, he's, What's can you up, see the chat? Charlie? Yeah. yeah. Hey. Oh, can, you, can you see the chats I put up? No, I didn't. Oh, that's why you haven't. Okay. So I've been trying to, I've been trying to delegate all the chats going between your channel and mine. And uh, I get some of them and I miss them. But Charlie is in the chat. Also, Gigmaster was in the chat a little bit ago and uh, had some nice comments as well. Uh, my good friend Rachel at Jersey Ray Diggs wanted, made, wanted to make sure I told you hi. So I'm, I'm not going to fail her. She said hello. Hi, and, I, and I do apologize because this, this, this chat tonight has been incredibly fast. And uh, everybody that's came over to Merrill's channel and to mine and watched tonight, it's absolutely fun doing this. I did figure out a few things for myself because my quest for knowledge is always, uh, it, it's really high. I'm always curious. Uh, Bluetooth pinpointers. That's the next thing that's kind of rolling around um, where uh, hopefully they tie to you. You know, the E-Track used to have a pinpointer that was attached to it and you could hear the E-Track signal within that pinpointer. I asked a question to the NOCTA representative at Digstock if that, if this detector was going to be similar to that or this pinpointer, do you uh, have, I mean, you know, has your quest for knowledge, you know, what's, do you know, have any idea what do you think's next in the pinpointer world? I have to enter the pinpointer world is the honest answer. I haven't uh, gone beyond my orange Garrett carrot and uh, you know, it works. And uh, you know, I, you only have so many, so much resources out there and, uh, you know, little people about to go to college and all that. And <laughs> I'm like, no, let's talk yourself down with the pinpointers. But perhaps someday, you know, the irate metaldetectors.com is growing, although it looks like crap right now. I have a little bit more to go. And then I've been planning on, um, you know, re uh, introducing it. Um, you know, as I get the, everything written, always something to do. <laughs> but yes, in the future, I would love to do pinpointers too. Just we are not there yet. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. You know, because that's the biggest problem sometimes with, you know, places that I choose to dig. Because you know, I, I'm in the Ohio River Valley, and there's a there has been a ton of history. You know, as far as going west, it kind of went where the water went. It was really easy for travel. So I've got I've got my fair share of good opportunities out there, but you know most of the places that you dig when you get down there near these areas of water, it's just so compacted with trash over the years as well, uh, due to flooding and just litter and whatnot. So uh, I always found that the that the Garrett pinpointer sometimes was a little too strong, uh, you know, because I'll chase the wrong target in a hole. I was really, I, I'm really hoping for something that makes my search time in the hole a little bit faster. I'm always trying to, I feel like my day is the more targets I dig, the better chance I have of finding what I want. So I, I want to, I want to be efficient with my, with my digging and I'm hoping that they make something to do that. Uh, you know, what, what is left on your bucket list to find? What, I mean, I know you haven't found a gold coin. I know, I know that's got to be high on your list. Do you do you go out deliberately digging every low tone you can find, trying to find that gold coin? Um, I just I, I get like there's some targets that I admittedly will pass over. It's not many, um, and I somewhat regret them whenever I do. But um, there's some that it's just like, and it's actually larger targets because I'm like, this is New York, that's a soda can. 
And it could be that I passed over a horde of something, but uh, that's the inference that I chose. Um, the coin that is driving me absolutely crazy is, um, what is it, Cap Bust or Liberty Cap? Um, the Silver Dime. Um, I know there's another era even before that, but I haven't even gotten to that. I found plenty of seated. Um, anything Cap Bust or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Once I once I find something in that era, I will I will investigate a little further. Liberty Cap, Cap Bust, Straight Bust, uh, those are all right there. I I don't I don't see them, so I don't know. I I can tell you when I find a seated, I found a, a few. I you know, and I I'll tell it today because it'll come out soon enough in a video. I can't remember when, but I actually found my first Flying Eagle penny. Oh, which right. I, that, that was huge on my list because you know something that's only in production for a couple of years that's right and, it's, and that old you don't know if you're ever going to find it and so that was uh that's my big bucket lister so far for this year um but you know I, I i would love to get it i've got one british copper and i got that when i was at dig stock in new york i would really love to get into some of the older silver that's what i'm looking for more than anything you know i I haven't found the seeded yet. The barbers, the dimes I find, I don't find the quarters much. People didn't lose that, I guess. Those are things that are still high on my list. Um, the house, how is, uh, do you rent the house pretty consistently? Does that work out for you? Yeah, yeah until the hurricane it did. <laughs> yeah, because it was in um, uh, Cape Coral, and that was uh, Cape Coral and Fort, Fort Myers was uh, the epicenter. Um, that's an earthquake term. Um, <laughs> that's where the hurricane hit and, uh, we got the wrong insurance. Uh, it, I mean, it, it covered us, but, uh, the deductible was, uh, pretty high 25,000. So it's, it's been fun paying that off. We're still working on that. Um, but, uh, still we're, we're trying to make this a year of travel and we're definitely planning on going back down there. Even though I did not find much on my first trip down there, there was something really awesome about uh detecting there i loved sanibel island especially which really got hit hard with the hurricane um the house kind of pays for itself um you know like it's not it, it takes a while for airbnbs to like really establish themselves um nobody has actually and i haven't told anybody this i offered uh you know people on my channel like you know use a metal detector um, I don't know if somebody from my channel has actually gone down, but I, I gave instructions on my site. You email me. I'll talk to you, you know, through, um, you know, using the Nocta. I don't think anybody has used that yet. So that's a bucket lister for me to have somebody uh, rent the place in Florida and uh, actually use the detector that is there uh, for people to borrow and uh, use on those great beaches. So um, <laughs> that's a bucket lister, too. So, uh, so I, I assume that that is on Airbnb website, I would assume, right? Airbnb and Verbal, yeah. And also on, uh, you can get a link to it on my website, iratemetaldetectors.com. Yeah. So before we get before we get out of here today, I got about four or five more minutes before I, I start closing it down. Uh, if you're in my chat, I don't know how it's going to work being cross chat, but uh, type in hashtag. Uh, I'll just write it once. And after that, hashtag capital NYC. And uh, we're, we're going to drop a $20 Amazon gift card tonight just because uh, to thank Meryl for being here. And it was such a great crowd. And it was a lot of fun seeing my chat go like that again, especially since he added his channel in. And um, it gets me prepared for the opportunity that I get that many people swinging in. Uh, drop that in there and, and here in about four or five minutes. Uh, we'll uh, we'll draw that bad boy out. If you're over on Merrill's channel, swing over here and stop by mine. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. I do kind of check that stuff. But, uh, yeah, it, it's all good. Man, I got to think that, I you know, how long have you, have you been on the metal detecting side now? I mean, honestly, I, when did you really start pushing it? Because I'm trying to think if it was 2018. Is that oh. right? So I started metal detecting in 2012 and uh, I started the channel actually in 2015. I uploaded like six videos 
And then I took a break for a few years. Um, I went into administration in schools and um, in charter schools. And that's a whole nother story. And, um, you know, I, I was like uh, a director in a school. So I kind of took a break from uh, all YouTubing during that time um, or part of that time. Um, 2019 was when I really was like, yeah, I need to do this. And I started uploading in uh, 2019, like, you know, uh, consistently. And um, yeah, so I guess I've been doing it for four years now. Yeah, I, I, I don't know where where I caught on. And it was probably because my search after, you know, after a few of the big early channels, I started going around. And I think that's how I I found your channel. I loved your channel because that if uh, when you did a premiere a video and, and there was there was always interaction. And, and, you know, that was one of the inspirations here is because I like the interaction with other people. I like meeting people. I've made so many. Uh, lifelong friends from this community you, it, that it's not even it's a I've got more brothers and sisters now than I could have ever hoped to have and that's just because there's a lot of people in here that are very like-minded they're very similar in personality there's no drama there's not a lot of bs I give everybody moderator status and I have I take you know we have no problems in my chat ever and I that's a tribute to the type of people that come in here so thank you guys for that. But it, the community aspect has been the absolute uh, win for everything. Team Lynch dropped a 1999 Super Chat. I believe that is in yours. I oh, thank you, Team Lynch. Oh. Uh, if it's in yours or in mine, it, whoever gets it, thank you very much. Uh, Teach Lynch Metal Met, Beach Metal Detectors. They're awesome community members, and I thank you all very much. Uh, I have 46 entries into the Amazon gift card, and I'm going to give that, draw that off here in just about two minutes. So if you guys want to get into it, uh, it, you have to be in my chat on my channel, I believe, because I, I'm not sure how this new interaction, but guest destinations by StreamYard on paid accounts is awesome because now Merrill got to, he got to see his audience tonight and I got to see some of his audience and it was really fun seeing how they interact with him even though he didn't get to see much of the none of the chat today so i don't know my glasses on anyway um yeah, yeah I, and, I, and I, as as stream is getting really sophisticated I, I i i gotta read up on it <laughs> uh it's simple uh it, it's very easy to interact you can make whatever you want to make for it um I, I i tinker with some of the stuff but they're making it more and more uh group orientated and the price really isn't that bad it's 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 a yeah it's a good spin if you want to customize it i didn't even i didn't even put up a logo today or anything i'm just like i'm in like bad shape which one of the ohio river there we go we'll use my new one there's the new one see put that up there you probably don't see that either no still i don't have 40 still have 47 oh sorry i didn't see that uh where did that go why do I not see that, Brockton? Uh, Ken, thank you very much. Ken dropped 10 memberships in the chat today. That is completely awesome. I can't see it for some reason. Let me get over here. Oh, yeah, they are. They're the code board that's going fast. I'll give everybody another minute because I need to get this thing rolling. I've kept Merrill long enough today. And then we will draw this bad boy out. Uh, oh, there we go. There's a few new peoples in here. Metal Detecting Northwestern Wisconsin. Please feel free to share your channel in here. And also, now let me get to it. Oh my gosh, it goes so fast. Richard Smart. There we go. Thank you, Richard. Jason Fogel. If you have something to promote, you're willing to promote that in here as a moderator. And then Ken dropped 10 more memberships. So be sure to enable memberships on your channel. It says allow gifts in the chat. And that is completely awesome. Uh, I see a few people that are picking them up right now. E excellent, everybody. I'm going to give you one more minute. I'm going to get this stream. I'm going to get it set up here. We have 48 entries. I don't think we're going to get too many more. Uh, Gutfinski, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Share screen. Get this up here really fast. 
Uh, there it is. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. <clears throat> Hashtag NYC. I'm, a, I'm, I'm serious now. As soon as we clock goes over another minute. Um, oh, and with that being said, when the winner is drawn, there's two email addresses going by at the bottom of the screen. Um, hit me up at either one of those. All I need is your email address to pay you your gift card. It will be delivered online and ASAP. 51 entries. Anybody? Charlie's in the house digging it back. Hey, Charlie, thanks for stopping by. Charlie, I think, had an interesting take on the on the Manicore. As, uh, I think he ordered one from, from one of the companies. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he saw it like in a, in a Dick's Sporting Goods before he got his or something. I'll have to hit him up on that. I know that there was some dilemma from the pre-orders and some of the people and some of the bigger places that got them. All right. It's we're going to draw at 57. It's getting ready. The clock's getting ready to tick over one more time. I want to thank you guys for all being here tonight. I'm going to draw this out. Uh, I need to know that you're in the chat or I will draw somebody else. So here we go. Three, two, one, go. Good luck, everybody. Who's it going to be? AU Diver 79. AU Diver, are you still in the chat? AU Diver 79. If you're still in the chat, please drop me a message here before this next minute or two goes by, or I'll draw it again. There, oh, there he is. No way. There you go. Congratulations. Uh, there's two email addresses going by at the bottom of the screen. Um, hit me up on those. And all you got to do is send me an email. Uh, say who you are. And I will send your Amazon gift card out uh, ASAP. <laughs> Teresa Treasure Hunter. Hello. Nice to see you. Let me get the share screen stopped. Hey, uh, by the way, Meryl, thank you so much. I'm, I, I, you look, I saw it in the chat earlier. Somebody said you look deathly tired. And I, know it's, <laughs> I know it's probably fairly late. It's these natural good looks. Come on. <laughs> hey, you know, it's, it's called age creates bags. So we, we all get them at, uh, in time there. Um, you know, six months to a year, I may hit you up to do this again. Sounds good. If you would hang out with me just for a second while I close this bad boy down. Everybody, thank you guys for being here tonight. I appreciate you. I look forward to seeing everybody on hashtag Monday Digs. If you don't know what that is, we line up uh, creators from 7 o'clock all the way until 9.30 and premiere new metal detecting or treasure hunting videos every week. We hang out in the chat and we support one another. That being said, much love to everybody that came in today. Meryl, thank you again for spending your time with me. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see everybody next time. Thanks, everybody.